Hello my quilting friends, my name is Leah Day and welcome back to the Friendship Quiltalog! <laughs> this is our second block that we are piecing together. This is a patchwork mosaic and it's a wonderful combination of quarter square triangles and hourglass squares. These are units I don't really piece with very much so it's going to be lots of fun to put together. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to piece this scrappy happy quilt block. So here is our patchwork mosaic block. And you can see this is a combination of two different units. We have quarter square triangles and hourglass squares. And I have an extra tip video on how to piece these units step by step. But here I wanna just quickly explain to you how you get the different looks. So everything begins by making half square triangles. You take two pieces of fabric layer them together and mark a line diagonal from corner to corner and then stitch a quarter inch to both sides of that line. When you cut along that line then after stitching you're going to end up with two half square triangles that look just like this. And I do press that seam allowance on the back open and flat just so it's easier to work with these units. So that is the first step for everything here. You first wanna make up a mess of half square triangles and you're gonna need both these, the scrappy and scrappy variety. You're also gonna need some that look like this where one half is scrappy and one half is background. So go on ahead and take your time and make those units. And then let me show you how to make the half, the, sorry, the quarter square triangles that look like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take that half square triangle that's scrappy and scrappy. You're gonna layer that right sides together with a piece of background fabric. And if you have a printed background, then that's gonna be right side up, just like so. And that piece of background fabric is going to be cut slightly bigger than your half square triangle. So there we go. Now mark a line from corner to corner on the diagonal and you're gonna stitch again the exact same way, a quarter inch to one side and then a quarter inch to the other side of that line. Then when you cut along that line, again, you end up with two different units. And you can see they're not 100% identical. The fabrics are going to, to flip. So where the fabrics are positioned is gonna be different in the two. Um, that's not something you need to worry about for this block at all, but it's something to just keep a note of whenever you're working with this unit in the future. So that's how we make the, um, I call this the AA because this is fabric A. This is an AA quarter square triangle. That's how you make those. And then for our AB quarter square triangles, what you're gonna do is take that half square triangle that has scrap on one side and black on the other, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna layer that right sides together with another square of fabric, mark a diagonal line across, stitch a quarter inch to one side, stitch a quarter inch to the other side. When you cut that apart, this is what you get. So it's the exact same set of steps, but it's two very different looking units. So make sure to refer to your pattern and go through that very carefully as you create all of these pieces. Okay, now let's talk about these quarters, these, uh, sorry, hourglass skirts. There's so many different terms here. It can get a little confusing, but this is the unit that goes into all of these corners here. And it's really funky. It's one of my favorites. To make this, you have a couple different options. You can do two totally different half square triangles, or you can do two matching half square triangles. You're gonna get two different effects depending on what you choose. So if I go with two matching half square triangles, I'm gonna end up with hourglass squares that look like this. You can see that's gonna be a very different look. It's gonna be a different effect because you're gonna have that same fabric repeated like an hourglass. So just understand that you know, your choice of fabrics is going to change depending on what you choose, depending on what you put together at the start. When I put these two together, that's gonna to create that hourglass square. So definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, so to make these, because you've got two seam lines, this can be a little confusing. What you wanna do is go right sides together and stack those seam lines exactly on top of one another, just like so. Take this to your machine, 
And again, exact same piecing. You're gonna mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. You're gonna stitch a quarter inch to one side, stitch a quarter inch to the other side. And when you press that open, you can see it'll make that really nice, cute hourglass square. So that is how you're gonna make all of those units. And again, please check out the other tutorial that I have that walks you through this step by step. If you're feeling at all confused about how to make these units, I have one video for hourglass squares and one video for quarter square triangles. Okay, so that is how we made the units. Now let's talk about putting our block together. And you have a couple different choices. I'll be honest, I always lean towards just simply laying out the pieces in rows and then stepping back and making sure everything's lined up. Do you see where I have a mistake right now? Sometimes whenever you're looking at a block from the side, it can be really easy to have a mistake here and not catch it. But when you shoot a picture of it, when you go overhead and shoot a picture of it, it becomes very obvious. that. Uh, quarter square triangle was rotated around the wrong way. So that's something to keep in mind and keep an eye out. Now, one thing that can be tricky and I can kind of get stuck in place with is whenever I have repeating uh, units and you're going to end up with repeats here. So you can see this half square triangle, this quarter square triangle, it's also right here. This one right here is also right here. That's gonna happen with this block. If that really bothers you, what you're gonna need to do is make but pretty much double the number of units you need and then save the extras aside for a future block. So it's up to you if you want a piece that much and make sure there's no duplicates in your block. Personally, I think if you go uh, kind of on the opposites here like this, it ends up looking pretty nice. You know, sometimes you just have to kind of mix it up and don't get too persnickety with this. The more you shuffle and fiddle around with it, the more time you end up wasting and I have found something always ends up being right next to something else and, and driving you crazy. So don't get obsessive with it. In short, just get it all laid out and let's put it together. So now I'm gonna grab my clips and this is the same method that I used for the last block. I basically just grab the block on the bottom and then the next unit, I flip it over. I place a clip and this is not perfect. I'm not lining this up really exactly. I'm just simply clipping it in place so that way I know that that is how that is pieced together and that is the seam I'm going to stitch when I get to my machine. Now I'll flip this one up, take this one, flip it over, place a clip. It's good to have some sort of system so that way you know exactly how these are supposed to go together. So you don't get to your machine and accidentally flip something around the wrong way, then end up making a mistake that you have to rip out. It's really easy, you know, just to get twisted up and around. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that I've learned, you know, especially when I don't have my table right next to my sewing machine, it's really good to have a solid system in place so that way I don't have to do any ripping. Okay, so that's how I'm gonna just line these up and clip them together and I'll meet you at the machine when we're ready to start stitching these rows together. So I am trying something really new this month and that is piecing my block on my Singer treadle. So this is a treadle machine, Singer 27. And this is the first time I've really pieced something real on this. So this is really exciting. So let me talk you through it. I'm gonna stop the machine here and with a treadle because you have a belt you have to be really careful with how you stop. So now I'm gonna get my next set of pieces ready to go. And anytime that you have seam allowance from one of your quarter square triangles or your hourglass squares, it's nice to be able to lead with that. And as you can see, I have seam allowance on both ends and on both pieces. So it doesn't matter on this one, but let's say the next piece when I have to piece this one, I don't have seam allowance up here. I'll flip that around or turn it around just like that so that way I'm leading with the side with the extra seam allowance. And the reason why I do that, it's a really small thing, but it's nice to be able to lead with the seam allowance because that is just extra bulky and it kind of puts the fabric in jail. So while I'm here at the machine, I'm gonna take my time making sure that those pieces are perfectly lined up, that corner is nicely lined up. I'm gonna lift the foot and slip the pieces right up against the needle. And that, again, is putting it in jail. The fabrics can't slip away from each other 
because they're going right up against that needle. And I'm going to start stitching. And really more than anything else, I'm just keeping an eye on the edge of my patchwork foot here, making sure that that stays right on the edge of those fabrics. I'm also keeping an eye on the ends, this corner of the fabrics as well, making sure that those go just exactly right together. So I've shifted my camera around so you can see from a slightly different angle. And again, I've got no seam allowance on this side, but I do have seam allowance on this side, so it's fine to start there. But this side's a little bit bulkier because I've got that extra seam allowance on both sides, so I think that's the side I'm going to start with. I'm just going to flip this around and just take a second to line those up really nicely so they're stacked right on top of one another. Then reach back and lift that presser foot so I can feel that those fabrics are pressed right up against the needle. Now I'm going to get started stitching. And this does feel just a little bit more uh, <laughs> complicated because I'm treadling instead of just pressing a foot pedal. So I feel like I've got a you know, little bit more to think about whenever I'm sewing on this machine. But I hope that you like how this sounds and just how I think it's, it's really easy to see exactly what I'm doing here because it's so open. Uh, you don't realize just how complicated this area of our sewing machines gets. You know, it kind of gets all bulky and plasticky around that area, but these older machines are really nice and open. Okay, so I'm going to do this one more time just so you can see how these pieces go together individually. Then I'm going to piece my rows together. So just stack those up really nicely. And the goal is just to keep the edge of those fabrics right in line with the edge of that patchwork foot. There we go. And get started again and stitch on down. And it, but the tricky thing is you never want to go backwards on a treadle. And so I'm learning how to stop. Like here I'm pausing because these ended up just being ever so slightly. I get just a little bit slightly bigger piece on the bottom than I do or sorry, slightly bigger piece on top than I do on the bottom. So what I'm doing is just giving that bottom piece just a little tug to extend it. So I've got a little thread there. I'm going to pick that out. There we go. So I'm giving that just a little finger tug and then stacking that second piece, that upper piece on top. You can see I've got just a little bit of extra fabric here. Something got a little stretched in piecing. And now I get started again going forward. There we go. You can put a lot of fingertip pressure down on your machine and that can really help you keep in control over units that end up like that. Okay, so I'm going to continue grabbing the next set of pieces. I'm going to keep trying to stitch and see if that works. Oops, I don't think that's going to work on this machine. <laughs> I'm going to grab the next set of units here and I'm going to continue piecing all of these rows together and then I'll meet you back here when we're ready to piece the rows together for our block. So now I'm ready to piece my rows together and to match these seams, I just stack them right on top of one another and pull back the front piece, this one on top. I pull that back and make sure those seams are stacked right on top of one another. Then I take those seam allowances that are flipped over and I pull them back so that way I'm just pinning through the minimum amount of fabric and that's where I place my pen. So there's what it looks like on the right side. That's what it looks like on the wrong side. And I always double check that because things can go just a little bit wonky. You might accidentally catch that seam allowance and flip it over. So always double check that and just take your time penning and then finger press that back over and flat. You want to keep these seams nice and flat because they are so bulky. We have so many different seam allowances coming in from all different angles. Um, if you want to experiment with trimming some of these seam allowances from the quarter square triangles and the hourglass squares down, that's totally open to you. I usually don't trim, but I'm honestly starting to think about it these days. <laughs> so here we go. I have my uh, rows pinned nicely together, and I'm going to get started with a scrap charger. Now this is how I start pretty much any sewing, no matter what sewing machine I'm working on. Uh, it's just a folded in half piece of fabric. And what it does is 
just helps to sort out any machine issues. If my machine's gonna gag, it's gonna happen on that scrap rather than happen on my pieces, which I would have to rip out. Another thing it helps me do is reduce my bobbin thread waste because now I just have a short little segment between these rows. So now I'm gonna get started stitching. And again, the goal here is just to make sure that the edge of those fabrics stays in nice alignment with the edge of that foot. So mostly I'm just kind of tweaking, making sure it's going to stay that way. Now on this particular machine, I don't have really a control over the stitch length. I don't know what stitch length setting I have it set to, uh, but I just adjusted it down until it was nice and narrow and tight, a nice tight stitch. On a regular sewing machine, I would be having my stitch length set to 1.5 millimeters. Okay, so coming right up to that pen, I'm gonna try and stop right there, and I'm gonna slide that pin out. Now, I have already noticed one issue that I can run into on this machine, and you may have this trouble on your machine too, and that is as I come down that side of the seam allowance, the back of the foot likes to get hung up on those seam allowances right when it's at that point, when the seam allowance is kind of stacked up right there. So what I found this best thing to do is just gently lift the foot, I'm lifting that presser foot, and I'm giving that a little bit of a tug, and that just slides those seam allowances away from that foot. I don't wanna give it so much of a tug that I get a big giant stitch and create a, you know, a really big long stitch right there. So it's definitely something to just go slowly and be very mindful about. So here we go, I'm gonna take out that pen, very carefully go over these seams. And then right when that seam allowance hits the back of that foot, yeah, so you probably could see, back up the video, you can see that probably slipped down pretty quickly. I'm gonna lift the needle up and slide. Let's see if I can get away with this. I don't know if I'll be able to get away with this, but if I give myself just a little bit of slack, I might be able to back up one stitch. This is the thing about treadles. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to take it off. So here we go, I'm gonna break thread. So I'm just gonna extend my thread just a bit. And I honestly didn't have a really big stitch right there, but it's one of those things. I just wanna make sure that the seam is nice and secure, especially because I press my seam allowances open. So I'm just gonna back up and stitch a little bit of this overlapped. So I'm gonna back up to about right there and get started in the right direction here. And then as I come down, yep, right there, I'm kinda of getting a little bit hung up lift that presser foot, give that fabric just a little bit of a tug, try and keep on stitching, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of that is unique to the machine I'm using today. A little bit of that though could be pressure, presser foot pressure. Some machines have a little knob on the top, and actually this machine does have a little knob on the top, then I can try and reduce the pressure of the presser foot <laughs> down on the fabric. And uh, that can be helpful. That can definitely make a difference. And uh, might, I just loosened it up. So let's see if that makes a difference. Well, I seem to have slid just a little bit easier on that one. So it's something to play with. If you start noticing that you get hung up on these bulky seam allowances, there's so many things that you can do. You can try trimming down the seam allowance, you know, uh, trimming down the corners on the half square triangles, the uh, quarter square triangles, the hourglass squares, all of that stuff. You can try trimming. You can also try loosening the press pressure, presser foot pressure. Gosh, that's hard to say. Uh, you could try doing that. And then you can also just try navigating this with the presser foot on the machine as you see me doing here, where I'm just trying to give the fabric a little tug and I'll also release that pressure here just off the back of the foot. There we go. So not a big deal, but just something that we want to be mindful of as we're piecing these long rows. Okay, so here we go down here at the end. I know this is kind of black on black, kind of hard to see, but I wanna make sure that these corners are gonna end up right on top of one another. And if you notice yours are just ever so slightly off, grab a pen and pen them into submission. 
<laughs> make sure they're going to end up the way you want them to end up. There we go. And then also gives you something that you can kind of manipulate. You see, I can use fingertip pressure there. I've got a little bit of baggy fabric here, right through that quarter square triangle. Not a big deal. As I stitch, I'm just putting that little bit of fingertip pressure on that piece. And even if they don't end up exactly right, and I, you know, if I have a choice between a pleat going in there or just the edges not being in perfect alignment, I'll take the edges not being in perfect alignment, quite honestly, because on this block, it really doesn't matter. We're gonna surround our border with um, a nice border. You know, we're gonna add strips all the way around it, so it really isn't that big of a deal. And here you can see, yeah, I'm a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch off there. Not a big deal at all. I'm gonna add some strips around, and even still, that isn't enough to make me go and rip something out, to be completely honest. So I've taken some time to press those seam allowances open. First I finger pressed, then I pressed with my iron on the wrong side. Now I'm gonna press from the right side. But remember, anytime that you have lots of seam allowances and really high areas and really flat areas, you always wanna use a pressing cloth. This protects the quilt block. And really, this is nothing special. This is just a piece of cotton fabric. It's just an extra spare fat quarter I had laying around. And I just put that over the block and press through it. And the reason you wanna do that is those high areas of seam allowance will come in harder contact to the base of the iron and it'll go shiny and that is scorching. You're, you know, whenever that happens to your block, it's actually really scorching it. And that's really noticeable on this black fabric. If you're using also a dark background like I am, then that can become really noticeable. So there we go, nice pressed block and it's ready to attach the borders. So the borders are just some narrow strips that we add to the outer edge, and that's just gonna bump it up, give you a little bit more room to hang on to the edges, so that way you're not gonna be, you know, right on the edge if we're quilting out all the way. Uh, it also gives you a little bit more wiggle room because once we trim up our blocks, we make them a little bit big so we can trim them down before we put them together. Now one more thing you might be wondering about, this piece ended up being just a little bit too long. I showed you that in the end of the video where the, the edge of the block just extended ever so slightly and notice how it did that on both sides here. That tells me that that piece most likely either got stretched out of shape or I did not trim it accurately down to size. It's not a big deal at all. All I'll do is just trim off this side with a nice long ruler that will square it up and then attach that extra border strip. And here's what it looks like when you're gonna piece block number two. Super scrappy, wonderful patchwork mosaic. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to piece this scrappy, happy patchwork mosaic with me today. Now don't forget to check out the other tutorials on how to piece the hourglass squares and these quarter square triangles. They're lots of fun, super easy units. Basically kind of think of those as making half square triangles twice. It's basically the exact same piecing done two times. So I really love these units. They're lots of fun to play with and it's gonna give you a great new shape to use in your quilts. Now you can come and join in the fun of the Friendship Quilt Along anytime. Find your patterns and all of the tutorials that I have shared so far to this project at leahday.com slash friendship. Until next time, let's go quilt. Hello my quilting friends. So here is what's going on on the table. Oh, giraffe! <laughs>